All right, so now that we have the ability to register and the ability to log in for users, um, we should update our navigation bar to actually work correctly for that exact reason. Um, so what I wanna do is actually get rid of a lot of this stuff and add in the login and information and, or register up here. All right, so let's first off jump into the nav bar itself, uh, navbar.html, and I'm gonna close out these other folders a little bit. All right, so now we've got our navbar.html. This is what we're gonna be working with. So the drop down, I'm actually gonna comment this out. So from list element to list element, comment that out, and we'll look at our nav bar now. Cool. So over here is where we're gonna do registration and login. So the first one is default. Um, we'll worry about the hyperlink in a second. We'll change default to register. And then we will change the li element to login. And I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff and just do login. And again, and we'll worry about the href stuff in a second. And I'm gonna get rid of fixed top as a link. Okay, so now we've got register and login. So let's refresh in here, register, login, perfect. So there's a couple things that we can do before we even jump into anything. And that is using our template context processor to determine which one of these links should show up. Now the template context processor we've seen already and we saw it with request. Let me just add in here next to register, I'll show you. We saw it with request.user as well as user. All right, so if I go back in here, refresh, we see ABC is the one that's currently authenticated. So that means that I can actually use this as a conditional, a template conditional. So if we did if request.user.is authenticated, then we can show something else. We can show something else. So in this case, I actually have them flipped, but we'll see what this does in a second. So if it's authenticated, then we'll show a login, else we'll show a register. Wait, that doesn't make sense, does it? No, it should be a log out, and that's all they see. And then if they're not authenticated, then we would wanna see login and register. All right, so if we refresh in here, we see log out, and if I was logged out, let's go ahead and actually log out. And let's see here, let's make sure that we spelled everything correctly, is underscore authenticated. And let's actually log this user out, could be because of that other user was not actually logged in, so let's log them out. The account's logged out, there we go. Okay, so now it's showing us logged in and logged out, I'm in register. Perfect. So let's actually make the URLs. And the first one is URL, and that's auth underscore logout. All right, and then the next two are gonna be very similar. Auth underscore login, and auth underscore register. Okay, so we refresh in here. Ah, we don't actually have auth register. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code itself. Um, so we need to find the URL pattern for registration. So this actually does happen every once in a while. It says no reverse match because our URL auth underscore register does not actually work. So there's a few ways to actually look at this. So we can look at Django registration redux um, code and we can look at Django registration. Of course, we wanna make sure it's redux. In registration, backends, default, URLs, we've already looked at this, of course. We come down and we wanna see registration for, we wanna see register, and here it is. It's actually registration, register is actually the name. Nothing to do with auth. So auth is not in there, so let's go ahead and copy that and go down here to registration, register, and that's now the URL. And if we refresh in here, now it's working. So I can click on login and I can also click on register. Um, and of course, we could have found this too easily by going into our current templates and going into login where it said need to register down at the bottom or not to member, register. That was also another way that we could have found it, but I wanna show you kind of how I would find problems or solve problems in that case. 
Um, okay, cool. So now we actually have login and log out and it works just fine. So if we do ABC, we log in, we can now log out and there we go. So what I just showed you actually would work for any password protected site whatsoever. But do keep in mind that this email newsletter signup does not register them. It's not the same, not even close. Uh, but that's where I'm going to leave this part. We will do one more thing with login just so you can see how it works. Uh, and then that's going to complete the, the registration process. Uh, but as far as actually email and email newsletter stuff, we're already done with that. We don't, we're not going to do anything more uh, because it's, it's fairly solid. We could change this data, but for the most part, it is ready to go. All right. So if you have any questions on this stuff right here, please hang on to them because we are going to revisit it right away. All right. So we'll see you in the next one.